Hey, what's going on guys? Ryan Nelson here, and today I'm running through a couple of tests. I'm actually testing out a new camera. I have the Panasonic Lumix GH5S, which I've heard a lot of good things about. I hear it's really geared towards filmmaking versus photography, and the idea is to have this as a very portable filming camera. So let's get to doing some tests with this thing and see how I like it compared to my 5D Mark IV. So I have a little event I'm going to, so I'm gonna take this thing with me. I'm gonna throw my vlogging mic on, my 70, no, not my 70, my 24 to 70 to 8, and we'll see what we can come up with. Let's go. On my way to an event, it's like beers and camera, basically, so that sounds really fun and right up my alley, so let's go check that out. Just in case you're curious, that was all shot at 240 frames per second on this GH5S. So despite the fact that this event was in Scottsdale, it was actually pretty cool. There was lots of nice people here. Everybody, you know, everybody's into cameras and photography and or video. So, you know, you meet a lot of good, good folks. Okay, so like I said, that was actually a pretty fun event. But I've had this camera for a few days now and I've been playing with it. I've always been a Canon guy, so this is totally new to me. I'm testing out Vlog for the first time. I've never shot in that profile before. Never shot on a Panasonic before. Never shot on a Micro th Four Thirds before. Never shot with a mirrorless camera. And this flip out screen is kind of new to me as well. So I thought about just buying this camera outright, but those are all new things to me. So I decided to rent the camera for a few days and give it a shot and see what it's capable of. So far, fairly impressed with it. It does a lot of things. It's really, it handles a lot of things, scenarios very well. And it's got V-Log built in, and that's really my first camera I've ever shot with a log profile. And it's kind of incredible the detail you can pull out of a shot. So the real reason I'm testing this is because I want to do 240 frames per second in studio. There's, it's a project I'm working on, but 240 frames per second seems like the ideal frame rate with the math of gravity and frame rates and slowing things down and whatever that math is, it seems to work out for what I want to do. So let's get back to the studio so I can do some tests and see how it compares to my 5D Mark IV, which I usually shoot on. So let's go. Okay, so we're back here in the studio and I'm doing a few tests. The reason I really wanted to test this camera out is it does 240 frames per second slow motion, which is pretty slow. A lot of B-roll you see right now is at 120. This says 240, which is even like twice as slow as that. So let's do a few tests compared to my 5D Mark IV and see what it can do side by side in slow motion. So looking at this side by side 120 comparison, even though the Mark IV is only shooting at 720, I do think upscaled at 1080, it does look a little bit better. It's really hard to see, but if you pause here, you can see it just looks a tiny bit sharper on the Mark IV. So now let's compare it at 240 frames per second. So clearly the Lumix looks a lot better than the Mark IV because one, we're upscaling from 720 and we're using optical flow to slow the Mark IV down to 240 frames per second. I do think the optical flow did really good job here, but it just, it's not holding as much detail as the Lumix. So in addition to the studio tests, I've actually taken this out on a bike ride. I've taken it out to the dog park a couple times just to see what, what it can do in slow motion in different lighting, different situations. So let's take a look at a few of those clips.
some of this 240 frames per second footage looks incredible. It was shot in V-Log, it was like really nice smooth motion, just amazing. But some of the footage also didn't look that great. It's not holding up that well at 240. So it's, it's kind of a give and take. Yes, it does 240, but I'm not gonna say it does it very well. So initially with this camera, I was really, really excited to check it out. It does some crazy things that you cannot get in a body this small. But the one thing I really like about using this camera with my Canon lenses is using this Metabone Speed Booster. It gives all my lenses an extra stop of light, which is, I don't know how they do it, but it's some fancy tech schmargen jargon, whatever. But they make it happen and it's really good in low light. If you're shooting a lot of low light, it's great. The other thing, the flip out screen is really nice. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's a little bit more portable. The biggest downside of this camera I can see, one, is the 240 frames per second doesn't hold up very well. And two, if you've noticed on some of those talking clips, that autofocus was all over the place. It just, it doesn't lock on. My Mark IV, it locks onto your face and it stays there. This thing, it was just, eh, eh, maybe I'll focus back here, maybe I'll focus up here. Okay, you're in focus. Now nah, I'm gonna focus on something back there. It doesn't keep on you and that's, that can be a problem. And if you're shooting outside in the daylight, the screen is quite hard to see. And then when you go to focus, the screen actually punches in a little bit so you can see enlarged of what you're focusing on. But if you still can't see it, then it doesn't really help. I actually, I kind of liked it, but I kind of hated it at the same time. And there's probably a feature in the menu to turn that off. I just never found it. But in my opinion, I don't think even with the flip out screen and shooting 120 and 240 frames per second, that this is a Canon killer. I, I just don't believe that. It does some things that the Canon doesn't do, yes. But I know that the things my Canon does, it does very well. And that's one thing that I really like about Canon is I can trust that when I buy a camera, whatever it does, it's gonna do it well. They don't just throw features in just to advertise that they can do this feature. They wanna make sure it works and it works really well. I remember when I got my first GoPro, I was all excited. This thing shoots 4K, how cool is that? Go to turn on 4K, you can only shoot 15 frames per second at 4K. What's that good for? So am I gonna buy this wonderful Panasonic Lumix GH5 that's smaller and lighter and does more things than my 5D Mark IV? No, I'm not going to. Because I know that my 5D Mark IV, what it does, it does very well. So I don't think I'm gonna be picking one of these up anytime soon, so I'm really glad I rented it before deciding to buy one. By the way, if you guys ever wanna try something out, I. I rented this through borrowlenses.com. It's the first time I've ever used them. This is not a sponsored ad, but they were quite a delight to work with. It, everything was shipped fast. They had everything I need. It came packed very nice. So give them a shot. I've dropped a link down below to borrowlenses.com. But now I've got to get this thing back in the box to ship it back to them. So I know a full frame camera compared to a micro four thirds mirrorless camera isn't really Maybe not a fair comparison. They're quite different cameras, they're quite different styles, but they do a lot of the same things. So if this helps you guys out at all, if you find any of this part useful, any of this entertaining, useful, anything like that, hit that thumbs up button down there, hit that subscribe button down there, and I will see you guys next time.